ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಆನ್ ಕ್ಲೌಡ್ಸ್ಗೆ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ನನ್ನ ಹೆಸರು ನಿಮಿಲ ಸೊ ಇವತ್ತಿನ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಪಿ ಯು ಸಿದ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಆದಂಥ ಎಕೋ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ನ ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಸನ್ನು ನೋಡ್ತಾ ಹೋಗೋಣ ಸೊ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ಎಕೋ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಇಂಟರಾಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಅಮೌಂಗ್ ದೆಮ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿತ್ ದರ್ ಸರೌಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಎನ್ವಿರಾನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಟೂ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಕ್ ಎಕೋ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ಸ್ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ಒಂದು ಟೆರೆಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಅದರ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಕ್ವಾಟಿಕ್ ನೌ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಎಕೋ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ so the interactions between the various biotic and abiotic factors of the ecosystem will lead to the maintenance of the ecosystem so both biotic and abiotic factors should be in a balanced way to maintain a balanced ecosystem now stratification in this is the vertical distribution of different species which occupy different levels for example trees which occur at higher levels than shrubs now various aspects taken out into consideration to study the functioning of ecosystems are productivity decomposition energy flow and nutrient cycling so firstly it is the productivity so productivity and you know it is a constant supply of sunlight which is required for the proper functioning of any of the ecosystem either biotic or abiotic now the amounts of biomass which is produced per unit over the area over a period of time uh by plants at the time of photosynthesis is called the primary productivity andre it is the amount of sunlight which is trapped by by the time of photosynthesis by plants now it is expressed as weight which is g to the power minus 2 or energy which is kcal m minus 2 and productivity can be mainly divided into gross primary productivity gpp and net primary productivity npp so gpp is the rate of production of organic matter at the time of photosynthesis now npp net productivity is the gpp minus respiratory losses which is r and secondary productivity this is defined as the rate of formation of new organic matter by consumers so primary productivity will depend on type of plant species which inhibit a particular area and photosynthetic capacity of the plants and nutrient availability and annual net productivity app for the whole biosphere is about 170b tons of organic matter now next is a decomposition which is a process of breaking up of the complex organic molecules into inorganic substances like the carbon dioxide water nutrients etc and next is the fragmentation now breaking of the detritus which is the dead plant and animal remains or the fecal matter into smaller particles by the detritivores which are the decomposers and leaching it is a process by which the inorganic matter is going to enter into the soil next is catabolism which is a process by which the detritus is degraded into simple inorganic substances by bacterial and fungal enzymes and next is the humification so what is this it is the accumulation of the humus in the soil and humus is resistant to microbial action and it will decompose at an extremely slow rate and it will act as reservoir of nutrients next is mineralization now the process by which humus will further degrade to release the minerals into soil is called mineralization and it is an oxygen consuming process and it's controlled by chemical composition of the detritus and climatic conditions now next is the energy flow wherein the sun is the sole source of energy for all the ecosystems existing on the earth and plants and other photosynthetic organisms will utilize less than 50% of the solar radiation which is called the photosynthetically active radiation par par now in an ecosystem plants are called the producer and animals which are dependent upon the plants directly or indirectly for their food are called the consumers and hence they are the consumers or the heterotrophs and plants are the autotrophs or the producers now the consumers can be further divided into primary consumers who are the herbivores secondary consumers who are the primary carnivores and tertiary consumers who are the secondary carnivores now coming to the food chain so what is this food chain it is the energy flow among the various constituent animals and this is known as the food chain and food web so the interconnection of various food chains is called the food web 
trophic level. So every organism will occupy a specific level in their food chain and this is the tropic level. Now next is the standing crop. So each tropic level will consist of certain amounts of living material at certain time and this is known as the standing crop. Now the number of tropic levels in a food chain is restricted because the energy transfer flow follows the 10% law which is only 10% of energy is transferred from lower tropic level to the higher zone of tropic levels. Now ecological pyramids. So what are these? The energy relationship between the different tropics levels is represented by these ecological pyramids and now their base will represent the producers or the first tropic level while the apex and the top will represent the tertiary or the top level consumers. Now ecological pyramid which is of three types pyramid of numbers, pyramid of biomass and pyramids of energy. So this is the pyramids of energy. So this is uh, 1 lakh kilojoules, I mean 1 lakh joules of sunlight and pyramid of biomass and pyramid of number. Now in most ecosystem the three pyramids are upright except in some cases wherein the pyramid of biomass is inverted in an ocean ecosystem since a small standing crop is of phytoplankton will support a large number of the zooplanktons and now the pyramid of number can be divided inverted when a large tree is eaten by small insects. However, the pyramid of energy is always upright and a tropic level will represent a functional level and not a single species as such. Also, a single species may become part of more than one tropic level in the same ecosystem and at the same time it depends upon the role which it plays in the ecosystem respectively. Now coming to the limitations of ecological pyramids. So these ecological pyramids will not take into account the same species which belongs to more than one tropic level and it will assume a simple food chain which almost will never exist in nature and it will not explain food webs. And Saprophytes are not given a place in the ecological pyramids even though they play a role in the ecosystem by decomposing. Now coming to ecological succession. So the composition of all ecosystems keeps on changing with the change in their external environments. Now these changes will finally lead to the climax community. So what is this climax community? It is a community which is in the equilibrium with its environment. Andre, uh, environment ke takka hage adu badlakta Gradual and fair predictable changes in the species composition of a given area is called the ecological succession. Now next is the series or the series. In the sequence of communities which are successively changing in a given environment, the transitional communities are the serial stages or the serial communities. Now succession will happen in an area where no life forms ever exist as in bare rocks, cool lava etc which is the primary succession or as in areas which have lost all the life forms before because of the destruction or even maybe the floods which is secondary succession. Now primary succession will take place hundred to thousands of years as developing soil on bare rocks is a slow process and now secondary succession is faster than primary because nature will not have to start from scratch and during succession any disturbances which is either na natural or man-made can convert a particular serial stage and earlier one. Now hydrarch succession what is this it will take place in wet areas and convert hydric conditions to mesic. Now xerarch so it will take place in dry areas and it will convert xeric conditions to mesic. Now pioneer species. So these are the species which first invaded a bare area. On land these could be lichens which secrete enzymes to dissolve the rock surfaces for soil formation while in water pioneer species could be the phytoplanktons. Now ultimate results of all succession is a climax community which is a mesic. Now coming to nutrient cycling, so the amount of nutrients present in the soil at a given time is known as the standing state 
and now nutrients are never lost from the ecosystem but they are only recycled from one state to another and the movement of nutrients through various components of these ecosystems is called the nutrient cycling or the biogeochemical cycles now there are two types of this one the gaseous cycle which is reservoir for these types of cycles series in the uh, sorry exist in the atmosphere and then is a sedimentary cycle wherein reservoirs for these type of cycles will exist in the earth crust now coming to the carbon cycle so these are the biogeochemical cycles about 49% of the dry weight of living organisms is made up of carbon and the ocean reserves and fossil fuels will regulate the amount of co2 in the atmosphere and plants will absorb this co2 from the atmosphere from photosynthesis i mean through the process called photosynthesis of which a certain amount is released back through the respiratory activities now major amount of co2 is contributed by the decomposers who will contribute to the co2 pool by processing dead and decaying matter respectively an amount of co2 in as atmosphere has been increased considerably by the unwanted activities of humans like burning of fossil fuels deforestation etc and next is the phosphorus cycle which is important constituent of the cell membranes nucleic acids and cellular energy transfer systems now these rocks will consist of phosphorus in the form of phosphate and when rocks are weathered some of the phosphate is going to get dissolved in the soil solution and this is absorbed by plants and consumers will get their phosphorus from the plants and phosphorus will return back to the soil by the action of phosphate solubilizing bacteria on the dead organisms so this is how the cycle will go on firstly it is the producer producer to consumer and then the detritus and soil solution and then sorry from the rock minerals the soil solution will again form and uptake or the runoff will take place and decomposition will take place and this will happen a litter fall in it thank you